thanks for being here. Today is Construction Financial Management and Accounting 101. We're going to talk about the numbers contractors must know and track to always make a profit. And I'm really going to focus on uh, what do I want what do I want my accounting team to provide me as a business owner, construction business owner? What do I really want from them? Most accounting firms, I, I shouldn't use the word most, some accounting company, uh, uh, employees, managers, controllers, bookkeepers, you know, pay the bills and print out the reports, but do they really help? You know, that has to get done, but I want more than that. So let's talk about all the things today that we need from our, uh, from our accounting team and what construction business owners and managers need to know. So that's kind of the theme today. Hopefully uh, it's good for you. So as we get started, uh, just so you know me a little bit, I started my construction company four years, five years out of college and uh, Headley Construction. And I've been in business uh, for 40 plus years. Around 2010, I started coaching clients a lot. I was speaking at World of Concrete for about 20, 25 years straight and about three or 400 other construction associations over the years. And uh, people got to know me. And so uh, when I basically closed down my construction and development company, I uh, continued on. And that's pretty much all I do now is help clients improve their business, grow, make more money, all those kinds of things. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're doing great. But if I can help, let me know down the road. And uh, so, so along the way, you know, I do a lot of coaching one-on-one, -on -one, uh, either in person or over the phone. Um, I have some groups. I have three or four groups that I work with on a regular basis. I have an online school, and then I'm going to, we're, we're starting our Biz Builder Boot Camps again. COVID kind of slowed us down, but we're, we've got one scheduled for November. It's a two and a half day workshop if you're interested, and uh, I'll email you the information when we're done. And then, of course, I wrote a book, which has helped me quite a bit in my coaching career and consulting career. So today we're going to talk about, you know, basically how to how to make more money, how to move your company, how to grow, how to make a profit. Uh, that's kind of the theme. And uh, accounting, yeah, they got to pay the bills, but I want I want to come up with ideas too today to figure out what I need to do to make some money. Job costs, tracking, know your numbers, uh, how to improve your profit margin, all those kinds of things. So that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, so I always like to start by saying, why why are you here? And since uh, this was a live workshop, it'd be different, but you know, you're here to learn. And so I'm going to really focus in on accounting and what I need as a construction business owner from my accounting department. That's what I'm going to focus in on. I'm, I'm not going to really get into the weeds, but I'm going to show you what I want, what I need to make a profit. Okay. So that's the key to what we're going to try to work on today. And um, so what's your goal? What's your strategies? What are you trying to accomplish. And I noticed that a lot of controllers and bookkeepers really have too much on their plate. And because of that, they never get around to helping the business owner grow the business or make more profit. I see a lot of companies with, I just talked to three clients yesterday on the phone. All three of them haven't got their financials for like six to eight weeks. What's up with that? I mean, how would you keep a, a, an accounting team employed if you didn't get me the financials by the 15th or 20th of the following month, you got, I mean, certain things are just must haves. If you don't have them, how do you know how to make a profit? That'd be like running a, driving a car like this. You can't. So how do we got to make a profit? We got to, we got to know the numbers and we can't wait for three or four months. It's, it's too late. We lose money out of the job every day. We can't wait a month or two to see if we're on track. Right? So we're going to talk about what works, what I want from a client. And I don't care if you're Pete Carroll, who's coaching the Seattle Seahawks. You know, he's one of my favorite coaches, but a lot of people don't like him, but I love him. And uh, I, I love to watch him. And he's always about continuous improvement. And he's looking at the big picture. So what are you looking at? And then, of course, you got Belichick, who's kind of the tough son of a gun, nice guy, strategic guy, built a great team with Tom Brady, of course. And... Uh, and what I realize is they got to change, constant change. In order to improve, you can't call the same plays over and over again. So you're, you're the head coach of your accounting department, of your company, of your uh, group, whatever, you're, whatever kind of business you're in. What are you doing to get the right plays and changing the plays and changing the strategy so you, so you continually improve and win? 
So as we leave here today, I want to ask you, what bold new plays are you going to call to take your business to the next level? All right? So we can grow and make more money. All right. Just a little startup recap. Uh, I, I emailed everybody a workbook. It's quite long. I also emailed you an Excel spreadsheet, which is a, one of my templates uh, bundles that I sell. Uh, so the Excel spreadsheet bundle is usually sell it for, you know, 100 plus. So it's, it's, it's like you paid nothing for the conference here today because you got basically the Excel for, for free almost. So, so uh, anyway, thanks for attending. Uh, we will take a break or two. I kind of, we got three and a half hours. So we're kind of going to see how it goes. I'll probably take one in an hour, hour and 15 in, and then we'll see how it goes. And I'll maybe take one more. So uh, we'll just see how it goes and, uh, and move forward. Okay. So let's turn to page three of the workbook and talk about your business. Talk about how's business. So let me get to page three on my workbook so I can make sure I'm on the right page, same page as you. Role of financing and accounting. So I always like to start by saying, how's business? Well, we're super busy. Everybody's busy. I just talked to one of my clients on the phone and uh, uh, where's the mute button? Everything's at the bottom. Nice to see you. Uh, the replay, yes, Jacob. Yes, this is going to be recorded, and you're going to get a link at the at the end of the session. Probably, I, I'm not sure when it goes out. Web uh, Zoom sends it out automatically. It might be later today or tomorrow. You're going to get a Zoom link for the recording, and it's we'll have it up for 30 days. All right. So answer that question. Um, thank you for the for the chat. All right. So uh, as we get going. How's business? Everybody's busy. And when you're busy, a lot of things got, don't get done. So, uh, you know, we run in place. We hurry, hurry, hurry. We never get done. There's our accounting department, overworked, over, underslept. And so we get out of control. We're going down the river as fast as we can. We're trying to do everything we can, the perfect clock. And, you know, we go out there and we, we continue to sell low price to get more work and Basically, busy, 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 and it doesn't make us any money. So what do I need to make more profit? Just ask yourself, what do we need to do to make more profit? What do you need to do? Well, number one, we need to get higher margin work. Well, you can't do that when you're busy doing cheap work. We've got to go out and get better customers and higher margin work. So, And we got to make sure our project managers and field foremen and superintendents bring jobs on budget, no missed items. It's so simple if you just st step back and think about it. When I work with clients, contractor companies, it's simple. How are we going to make more money? We either got to get better clients, better customers, got to do more sales, and we got to stop losing money out in the field. Simple. Got to finish on time. So we just got to fix those problems. That's what I call my PIP program, Profit Improvement Program, which I've helped a lot of clients with. And so the first thing we need to know is, you know, business is great. Yeah, it's great. We're booming, but are you making any money? How's your cash flow? How's your net profit? Are you are you above industry average profit margin? One of the guys sent me a note, said, what percent of sales should be overhead? Your overhead's whatever it is. You can't, you know, if you need 10, guy, 10 people, you need 10 people. If you need five people, you need five people. So your overhead is a function of what you need, what not, not what you should have. Now, there's industry averages between 3 to 20%, depending on sales and size and job size and number of people and number of jobs. I mean, if you do one or two $2 million jobs for a $4 million company, you don't need much overhead. If you do $4 million jobs for a small um, you know, air conditioning contractor does $50,000 jobs, you need a lot of overhead. So there's no right percentage. So how's your profit? How's your net profit? How's your cash flow? How are you doing? Uh, do you track your numbers? Do you know your numbers? Do you know, I mean, what's your sales goal for 2023? We're almost done with 23. We got a few more months. What was it? Did you hit it? Are you close? What was your profit goal for the year? Or do you know what it is? Are you tracking it? Do you have a chart? Uh, what was your gross profit goal? How much overhead were you uh, supposed to spend in your budget? Do you know? Um, do you know your annual cost of doing business? Do you know what your labor burden is? You know, we've got new uh, health care and new 
new tax rates and new workers' comp rates. Do you know what your labor burden is? Are you still using the old ones? Um, and do you know your net profit year to date? Or are you waiting for your P&L, which is late by about four or five months? So let me know. Think about it. Where are we? And uh, um, all those kinds of things. So, so what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? What do you want? What do you want? So in construction, there's a lot of moving parts, and we get really busy running around doing our job and doing paperwork and scheduling crews and paying the bills and doing the pay payroll. But what's the role, the priorities? What are the top accounting and financial priorities? What are they? Well, there's certain things you just got to do, and you got to do it on time. But what else? I got to keep that elephant dancing. I got to keep that company dancing. Moving, what can I do to provide figures, numbers to help my management team hit their visual and, and written and clear goals? Well, I want to know which foreman makes more money. I want to know which project manager makes more money. I want to know how much sales per project manager, per superintendent, per foreman, per performance, everybody does. I want to know how much profit each of those bring in. I want to know which crew is faster than the other crew. That's what makes me money, not just paying the bills. So what else can you do to make sure you make money and keep the elephant dancing and hit your job cost goal and hit your financial, financial goals and hit your estimated job cost budget? So I start with a bid and it turns into a budget. I got to hit it. What do I need to hit the budget? Think about it. You're out on a crew. What do you need? I need to know, number one, what the budget is, and I need a weekly update of where I am. Am I on budget or am I behind? If you're playing football or basketball and you don't know the score, how do you know how what you have to do to win the game? You have no clue. You know, the last two minutes of every football game, there's like five touchdowns, right? Why? Because they're seeing the score. Well, if your crew doesn't have a clue, your crew doesn't have a clue, it rhymes, how do they expect them to bring it in on budget? They don't even know what the budget is. They don't know where they are until the job six months later. And they you give them their review and you say, hey, you know, you lost money six months ago. Well, that's no good. So what's riskier? Uh, you know, without project, profit margin fade. So what's riskier? Think about it. Construction? Yeah, pretty risky. Or gambling in Las Vegas. What do you think's riskier? Well, at least in Las Vegas, you know what the risk is. You know, you're, it's probably 95% loss, right? In construction, you bid a job to make 3%, 5%, 10% net profit, and then we don't make it. A lot of contractors I, I go see or they we start a coaching session with, and I said, How, what's your average markup? They go 20%. I go, I'm looking at your P&L, and you only made 12 overhead and profit. They go, I go, what happened? Well, you know, we had some problems. Well, is that acceptable? No, but that's just how it is. No, it's not. You shouldn't have any problems like that. You should manage your company so you don't make any money. So these are the kind of issues and questions I want you to ask as an accounting team. Why are we going backwards, boss? This is stupid. What can we do to fix it, right? And so think about construction zone, falling profits. Watch for falling profit shrinking. You know, it's like I got guys that tell me they bid at 20 but they're really hoping to get 15. Well, why don't you bid at 20 and get 20? You know, well, I, I'm not sure I'm going to have everything. I'm not sure my, my budget's accurate. Well, why not? Because you don't do accounting. You don't do tracking. You don't keep track of what things cost. You just kind of square foot everything and hope it works out, right? So what's profit? Got profit. Um, got profit. Uh, do you know and track your numbers? Um, I wrote a book once, Everything Contractors Know About Making a Profit. It's a blank book because I speak at World of Concrete all these years, and there's so many people who tell me they make 20%. And I said, is that gross or net? And they go, I don't know. Does that include your salary? And, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, they don't know. They don't know. So what do they know? But they've got a business. You know, 80% of contractors don't have a clue about, you know, they're making money. Um, and so profit, what's profit? Profit is financial gain or return on investment from investing capital. That means you start with money. So if you have a cash flow problem, it's because you grew 
you outgrew your capital or you didn't make any money, so you can't grow. It takes money to grow your business, to manage your business. You know, most of us, you know, 30, 60, 90 days for you know, get paid and you got retention. If I got a client who's got does about 40 million a year, he's got six million in retention out all the time. You can't do that with no capital. You got to have money. And so profit is financial gain, return on investment from how much you're investing, money. So you take money. It needs money. If you do a million in sales, you probably need at least 100 to 200,000 capital to, 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 to run a good business. Bonding company requires 10% of your backlog in working capital, cash. If your backlog's a million, you need a uh, hundred to 200,000 of cash in your business. And so profit is return, return on investment, reward. You take, you get a reward when you take risks. The more risk, the more reward. The, the higher, the tougher the job is, you should make more money. Commodity work, I, I had a lot of clients that do commodity work, like, you know, just drywall, about eight foot drywall, nine foot drywall, T-bar ceilings. You know, it's commodity work. Anybody can do that. There's not a lot of risk. It's square foot. You multiply it by whatever it is, right? But you get an electrical and mechanical and high rise and, and electronics and and uh, freeway work. I mean, there's a lot of risk. So they get, so you'll see when I show you the figures, those kind of people make a lot more money. And so think about what you're doing. How do you improve, improve your profit? And you're entitled to make a profit based on the risk you take, return on investment. And so are you hitting your profit targets? Yes or no? Do you know? Do you have? Do you even have targets? What do you think accounting is supposed to do? Give me targets. And are you tracking your job costs every week? How, do I, how can I expect my crew to bring it on budget when they don't even know what the budget is? And I'm not giving them reports every week. It's, I just had an old client of mine six, eight year client, they've struggled. They've got a big crew, concrete crew. They've struggled. And I've tell them for years, put in a job cost tracking system, a weekly report. They finally did it. And they go, oh my God, we're starting to come in on budget now. Duh. The guys know what the goal is. And they, and they, 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 they their goal is to hit it. And we give them a report every week. And then we give them an incentive if they bring it in under budget. It's so simple. It's so obvious. So now let's think about presidents, typical presidents, owners. Uh, some company owners, managers think accounting is what? Uh, you know, you look at all these CEOs of, of Walmart, of uh, Microsoft in the old days, <laughs> the, the funny show, The Office, of course, uh, you know, a finger pointer or a grumpy boss. You know, what are they thinking about accounting? They're hard to work for sometimes. They're rough, they're tough. They don't really understand money, a lot of them. You know, they grew up in the field or they grew up doing project management. You know, some of the guys know the numbers, they're est they were estimated, but most guys didn't go to an accounting financial management class. And gals, of course, I have several women uh, presidents I work with. And they, they think accounting's what? It's just an overhead expense. It's a necessary evil. It's overhead, it's expense. I don't wanna pay extra money for accounting. Well, accounting is a value-added proposition if you do it right. And so what do we have to do to remember accounting is not just paying the bills. It's not just collecting money. It's what? Accounting is what? Adding value so I can make more money. Providing me reports that help my crews finish on time. Providing me as a company owner with statistics and uh, figures to help me decide who's the best, what job should we do, what job should we not do, what foreman's good, what foreman's bad. That's what I want. I don't want other things that don't help me. All right. So CEOs focus on the, the, the big, big time CEOs focus on what results. Are we making money? That's all the day to day activities are relevant. If we're not hitting, I mean, you're in business to make money, not to do work. And so there's three things they focus in profit, stock value, your net worth. And of course, we've got to grow. If you don't grow, you can't increase your value and your profit. If you stay stuck, your overhead's going to grow too fast. So what are we going to do? We need to focus on what we need to focus on, right? 
So when we work all our time on estimates, bids, contracts, customers, production, schedule, material, equipment, crews, PM, people, change orders, you know, payroll, job costs, the bank, PL, cash flow, all those things detract from focusing on the things that really matter. So what really matters in your company? It's hitting the numbers. So when we come to a choice every day, what do we want to go after? We want to go after results. So do we go left or do we go right? Do I spend my time out in the field running the crews and order material, or do I spend my time getting more sales, increasing my margins, putting in systems, uh, developing better customers? And so if we continue to do what we do, we get the same results. If we focus on the things that make us money, we improve results. So what do you want to work on when we leave this workshop? Um, and so I love this cartoon, the little teacher, I've used it a hundred times. The little teacher says to the, to the, the, the little kid says to the uh, t- teacher, hey, teacher, you'll find my test results are a pretty good indication of your abilities as a leader. So think about yourself. I mean, the results you're providing are an indication of your ability as a leader. I had a call yesterday with one of the guys and he says, how do I know when my, my, when my accounting department's overloaded? I mean, they, I'm like two months late on my P&L every month and I'm not getting all the reports I need. I said, well, are they efficient or do you need more? You know, it's they need to step up and tell you what I can do and what I can't do. And you have to determine if they're competent enough to get it done and efficient enough. But you can't just keep tolerating poor performance. That's the worst things leader do. leaders do. So think about your role as a, an accounting manager, bookkeeper, controller, and the owner's role. What's your role between yourself and the accounting department? If you're not getting what you need, you got to do something. You need the numbers. I've got a list for you in the handout toward the end of what you need to know every week, every month, every quarter, every year. There's no excuses. I need this stuff. I, my field crews need to know their job costs every week. No excuses. We're in the labor business if I'm a subcontractor. My labor is where I make my money. I need to know or lose. I need to know where we are every week on every job. And the other thing I notice is equipment just sits out in the yard and we act like it's free. Accounting doesn't job charge the equipment. That's so prevalent. It makes me crazy. The estimator puts equipment in the budget and then we don't job charge it. So we think we make money. We don't. We got a bunch of equipment that costs us a lot of money sitting in the yard or out on the job. It's not free. So think, think, think about it. What's your role? What do you need to do? And so here's where we start. We start with a, a potential in our business. We can do so much great work. So we go out and get some sales, hopefully at high margins or low margins. And then, of course, we have a valve. We either open or shut the valve. And through the valve comes profit, value, or growth. So the, the valve is really your shutoff valve or your open valve. It opens or controls your profit. So if it's slow, if it's if it's shut, half shut, half open, it's what? It's holding back the field because they're not getting job cost reports. It's holding back the business from growth because we're not collecting our money fast enough. We're not getting our invoices out. Uh, we're job charging things to, to the wrong job, or we're estimating using old numbers, which don't work anymore. So think about what's shutting off your potential. Where where are you leaking money? Accounting can help us figure out where I'm leaking money. Which part of my jobs am I going over budget? Is it general conditions? Is it labor? Is it equipment? Is it subs who have continual change orders because they miss stuff and I didn't write a good subcontract with a bunch of detail? Is it schedule? We're always going over budget and our general conditions always go over budget. Where are we losing money? That's what I want you to think about. Where are you leaking money? So what's your role? You know, where's your business leaking? What's your role? So if you're the owner, you got to look at the big picture and you can't, you can't see it without the numbers. If you're in accounting, your job is to help the owners and the presidents, the managers, figure out where we're leaking money, not just pay bills, right? So that's the key. 
And so the perfect watch for accounting and finance and bookkeeping is, is not some expensive watch. It's ASAP. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. No, that's a bad watch. You got to get in control. You got to figure out what the top priorities are and the B priorities. You know, you, you, you bring in uh, assistance to help you do that. But I got to take care of the big picture. I got to know the score and I got to know what's working, what's not, what plays are working. So uh, when we're too busy, the company loses money. If you can't get everything done, accounting, the company is guaranteed to lose money. Period. You're accountable if we make money. Now, if they're not willing to give you the team, well, we got a problem. You need to talk to the owner and they need to hire me and I'll kick them in the fanny and you know what I'll do to them. I'll make them do it. We got to look at your team to make sure it can accomplish the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Now, obviously, every size company is different. And so when you're not getting things done, you're too busy to help your company make more money. Here's your portrait. Accounting manager self-portrait when you're just not cutting it, right? You just keep working hard and you just get tighter and tighter. It's no good, right? Okay, so accounting. Accounting. Um, let's turn to page four. Page four. Get my notes organized here. Page four. All right, so just some ideas here. Uh, what can you do to help your business grow? What can you do to add value? Um, you know, we got to have software, great software that's fully integrated with accounting, project management, and estimating, and job cost reporting. That's it. And if it's not, you're doing a whole bunch of Excel spreadsheets, and you're doing a whole bunch of yellow pad and notebooks, or you're just not doing it because you're too busy. I got to make that a priority, and I got to have those weekly job cost reports. And I got I, I, I can't allow payments without a signed contract insurance. I can't pay change orders without signed contracts, signed change orders, lien releases, insurance certificates. I got to stop letting the, letting the suppliers and vendors and subcontractors run my business as a general or you as a subcontractor. You got to, you got to start, you got to grow up. You got to get professional here. And I know most of you are who are on here today. But we've got to keep track of, we're paying a lot of money for equipment. Are we getting a return on investment? We go out and spend 100 grand on something, and are we getting a 15% return on that tractor or that backhoe or that skip load or whatever you're buying or the truck? You know, that's accounting. Someone has to tell me if, it's, if we're making any money, what's our utilization rate for our equipment? Are we using enough to bring, make it break even or making a profit? Otherwise, rent it, right? That's accounting. So accounting, the principles and practices to, you know, this is a typical, typical uh, de definition. Systematic record, present, analyze, and interpret financial results. Notice the word analyze and interpret. Not just do the work, analyze it and interpret and help the, the client, the customer is the boss, do what you need them to do. The traditional role of a bookkeeper is pay the bills, do the payroll, send out invoices and print the p l that comes off QuickBooks or whatever software you use in foundation, but not adding any value. And so what we have to do is make sure we uh, analyze, add value, and of course, interpret. That's, that's what I want you to do, accounting. I don't want you to just do the money, do the numbers, right? So, so uh, question for controllers. Definition, the person in charge of expenditures and control. What do you control? You just react to whatever you get. Do you really control things? That's a bad, I don't like the word controller. It's, it's, a, it's a bad name. I like accounting manager, full charge bookkeeper, uh, uh, CFO, accounting manager, book, uh, finance manager. Those are great titles, but controller, eh. It doesn't tell you what they're, they don't control. They might control a little bit, you know, like what, what software we buy, but really they're not controlling anything that helps the business grow. And so what I want from my financial managers, I want a partner, a mentor, an industry knowledge. I mean, you should know, I get asked, what should a contractor make? You should know that. You should study it. You should go to Construction Financial Management Association, be active in the industry. You, they, get, they have surveys of what the average contractor makes and how much money you should invest to make so much money uh, and help me with business decisions. Come to, the, come to our management meeting and provide value, not just numbers. 
be visible in the industry, know which banker, CPA, lawyer to hire. That's and where to get the best bonding, not just. I mean, that's your role. Um, and, and and so, the full charge bookkeeper. Uh, that's that's almost good enough, up to about five or ten or fifteen million. But then we need somebody stronger. But but at least a full charge bookkeeper will provide us with on time P and L, on time financial statements, weekly job cost reports, uh, bonding payroll reports, uh, do all the journal entries, basically run the accounting department until it gets to a size where we might have three or four people in accounting. And then we need someone who's more of like an accounting manager. You just add the word manager to the job description. So think about how you're organized, what your role is. It's more than just paying the bills. So I've got a long list there. I don't want to walk through it. That's for you on page four. Check off Sit down with your boss, you accounting people, and uh, check off what your uh, role is. What are you going to do? You know, uh, no, the last one, find find and fix leaks. The second one, know the business, be involved. Top one, improve the net profit. Third one, reduce profit margin fade. What can you do to help in every one of those areas? Because every one of those is super important. Okay? Well, for me, accounting is more than numbers. It's... Uh, it's value add and it's PIP. I call it the PIP program, Profit Improvement Program. Counting helps improve profit, not just pay bills. What are you doing to PIP? All right. Okay. Let's turn to page five. Uh, and it's lonely at the top. I need help. Help, help, help. I get calls from um, business owners and help. You know, I got an email earlier. Help. You know, what am I going to do? I'm trying to sell my business and nobody will buy it. Well, duh, you're not making any money. You don't have a team, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have a financial manager who can add, you know, help, help, I need help. So anyway, I don't want to get that call. I want your company to be really slick on the money. Okay, so let's turn to page five. Uh, got profit. Let's walk through some of these terms. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Okay, so I'm going to give you an overview. Here's a big picture. We go out and get some sales and volume, we collect it. Then, of course, we pay the job costs. Whatever's left over, we pay the overhead. And uh, then, of course, hopefully there's some money left over. Yeah. Now, what happens if you grow your overhead? You, you add another person. You add 100 grand. So let's think about it. You add 100 grand of overhead, and your average margin is 10%, let's say, gross margin. How much additional sales do you have to create to pay for that hundred grand? It's simple. It's a million dollars. A million times 10, 10% is what? hundred grand. So you, you spend an extra hundred grand, you got to do a million dollars. Now, if you're over, if your markup's 20%, you've got to do a half a million. And that just breaks even to pay for that person. So I got to know this stuff as an accounting manager or financial manager or bookkeeper or full charge bookkeeper. I didn't say controller. And so, uh, you know, what happens when we go out and put a boat on our overhead? Anybody got a boat in their yard or a Ferrari or an extra motorhome or too much equipment or maybe a big crane or, you know, too many people sitting around? What do you got that's costing you money? So every one of those divide by 10 or 15 or five, whatever your markup is. In or margin, and boom, that's what sales you have to pay for people hanging around. And uh, somebody asked me yesterday, how what do we do in, uh, in the upper 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 country where it's cold or the East Coast upper? It's cold. And what do you do with these guys during the summer? They well, they, do we keep them? Well, okay, that's 300 grand. You got to do three more million to pay for those guys all winter if you're going to keep them, right? So I'm not saying get rid of people, I'm just saying you got to look at the numbers. And so what can I do to increase profit margins? If your overhead's fixed, your markup's always 10% or whatever number, you, you need more sales. It's simple. Sales, sales, sales. Or improve your job cost. Or what? Higher margin customers. It's, those, that's your options. You've got three options. It's not work harder. I mean... I'm sure you're not too inefficient out in the field. So maybe you can pick up a point or two, but you need a lot more than a point. 
We need to get five or seven or eight percent more. So what do we have to do? Better customers, more sales. An extra two million in sales at 10% is 200 grand. It pays for a lot of cents, right? Or 20 million, just do the math, right? Some of you guys are 20, 50, 100 million. A lot of clients close to 100 million and some around two to five. So that everybody has a different story. And if your overhead's, your overhead's gonna change, just 100 grand, let's say the, the president's 100 grand, divided by a million is 10%, divided by 10 million, it's, it's what? 1%. So the overhead is a function of size and the kind of work you do. All right, so profit, I've already covered this, financial return on investment, uh, reward, and of course, you're entitled to make a profit, okay? Uh, so accounting one, 101, 